Hey, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be the second part of the actual introduction to Microsoft BI with Excel. The webinar that is going to be held on the 20th of May is going to be in Spanish, not in English. Uh, but I'm going to be doing this in English this time so you guys can actually get a closer look at what Power 2 can actually do for you and the Excel business intelligence stack. Uh, here we're going to be just taking into consideration what a traditional pivot table looks like, how it actually works, and how Power Pivot can actually help you create better and simpler models so you can consume your data using pivot tables in a much easier and faster way. So here I have a traditional table. Uh, it comes from A to G. Actually, uh, a data source is just a query that I get, a report that I get from IT. And let's say that the H to L are basically lookup functions. This is everything in, in English, Spanish now, but it's uh, build cups, just doing build cups, and they're actually using text functions for year to actually transform this into something that can actually be held in just one table. So here uh, on this column, column H, I'm actually looking at this product. In this lookup table, I'm actually looking up and getting the uh, actually getting the product name. From this, this is the client. From here, in column F, I'm actually looking up in here. As you can see, that for salesman, which is the G, I'm actually looking up in this uh, table here. You notice that I didn't bring up all the fields from those tables. I only just took a few because uh, this table is actually quite long. It's half a million, yeah. a little bit more than half a million rows. So you'll notice that right now is actually trying to uh, go as fast as it can possibly can. Uh, but opening just opening this report is actually quite quite a hassle. So we need to create just one table, hold all of our data in just one table, uh, input as many columns as we need to this uh, primary table. So we can later go here on the sign and go with pivot tables. And with this pivot table, I click on a sub, I will actually try to, as you can see here, is reading data, try to actually create a new sheet with this. And it's going to take uh, quite a while because it's, it's trying to take all of the uh, five, no, almost half a million rows from this table on trying to use the pivot table traditional engine. So let's say that I want here to see, I want the year filter, I want the uh, Supervisor sales is the supervisor sales, and then I want to see by month. I want to see the gross sales. Click here, gross sales. Now you notice that it tried to take a while to actually calculate all of this, but now let's say that instead of month here, I want to actually click here on type of client. It's trying to read the data still. It's done now. But now you'll see that basically it's trying to work as fast as, as it can possibly can, but it's taking a while to calculate everything because it is uh, taking a lot of space of my RAM because of the, the actual density of the table. But it's calculating everything. Now, the reason why you, you might want to actually use uh, Power Pivot to actually uh, consume your data in pivot tables is because here you only get aggregations based on this context. And the context goes up these rows, these columns. Uh, but if, if you need something that is out of context or that it needs some kind of some type of specific aggregation, like Let's say that you want to, for example, I want to add 
a column that will give me the distinct count of product that this supervisor will sell. Uh, sell supervisor like the team. Uh, I will be able to get that from here. If I want to get something like a uh, year to date uh, by specifying the actual dates here, let's say that I actually put the dates here, and I just select a few. Uh, let's say that I actually uh, yeah, 15 of April. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get any type of month to date. I wouldn't be able to get a quarter to date. Any of that time intelligence is not here. Uh, most of those calculations in a business intelligence uh, solution are extremely needed, are extremely helpful, and they are they're needed for anyone who actually requests that they, they, anyone telling you that they need a BI solution, they will tell you that they need to have those. If you're only able to provide this type of reporting, uh, simple, uh, and kind of simplistic in a way, uh, you won't be able to actually get their attention or be able to create uh, unique dashboards. In fact, if you only use this, you're probably halfway there. You're only halfway there because you'll need to actually create some sort of uh, function that will actually retrieve all the other information from that table. So let's try to take a look at the actual Power BI. Now, I already created my, my Power BI model. What I did is that I imported those tables into this webinar Power BI uh, Excel worksheet workbook. And while well, I actually saved it, saved that, it only took me about almost 12 megabytes against 64 megabytes so that's basically about 20 percent of the total of the original one because this is actually held this one we're in a traditional which is the original uh, it actually has the tables within the file while the actual power pivot model is actually just importing the data as you can see show you okay. so here I have from 16 connections I have here that I'm actually querying this data from here over to my truck box and I import those to here and it's only using 20% of the original uh, file size. Now you'll see that I have all of those in here and instead of actually importing those bill, those those bill cups uh, columns what I did is that I only put it the ones that I wanted uh, here in the primary table right here and based on this columns what I did is that I created relationships between each other so after that, after I cre actually created the relationships, I can actually be able to see these here on the diagram view. Uh, you'll notice that I'm going to be getting a star schema, which is pretty simple. Uh, the most simple way that you can actually consume your data. And besides that, here, you'll notice that I have a calendar table with date, year, uh, month, and serial number, and a combination of the month serial number and the month in text. So I have my search schema here, pretty simple. Uh, but I'm going to be adding one more table, which is this one. I'm going to be going to Power Period and create link table. This is going to be adding the table to this view, to this diagram view right here. And by adding this table, which is now named table one, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna lower this, lower this bit. I'm gonna be creating the relationship between this to this, because this is the lookup table. You notice that it's actually going from the many to one relationship. This is what this means. This arrow here means that this is. The lookup table. So let me close this.
now and what I can do is that I can create a pivot table here click here, pivot table uh, click on new sheet new worksheet now, now that I actually have that I can click on well, I can actually click where it says Else, let's say that I actually have supervisor here. With supervisor, then I actually have. Uh, let me see. I have products here. I want the products here. And then I want to add the sales primary table here sales gross just this one after that oh, I have this one still open so it's actually taking a chunk out of my memory so I'm gonna be closing this save so you can see that since it's actually taking a lot of memory it's going to be taking a long time to actually uh, close it so I'm going to be pausing this and when it's done loading I'm going to be resuming this oh that was quick so let's go now that I actually have this here as I want it I can go on clients and basically again have a category for the clients let's say that some some are premium uh, you'll notice that it's actually running much faster because it's not taking that much of uh, memory because of the other file that, that was actually open uh, you might want to take that in consideration uh, from here let's say that I wanted to add uh, the amount of products the distinct count of products I can go here and I can actually well, let's go here. Uh, sorry, primary. Uh, okay, product here. I can actually put it here. It's going to be doing a sum first. So I can do an aggregation by distant count. And distant count is going to be showing me 30 products. Uh, why is it actually 30 products? Because it's actually doing the. Uh, it's actually doing this count, which is 30 for each one. From here, let's say that I wanted to also do a distant count on the client, uh, just see how many clients you actually have per category. Uh, I can actually go here, distant count, and as well, we actually have 97 for each one. Now, cool feature here is that I can actually do some other functions that they are coming actually out of the box here. Say that I actually want 2013, and I want uh, okay. month. I want to be March, or let's say I want February here. You can see how this is moving now. So I want to create a simple calculation. Before we actually create the calculation, I know that we imported the calendar table, but before we do any type of time intelligence, we need to uh, name this or have this as a calendar table, which is marking this here on the side. So in here, we should be showing as marked as date tables. I'm clicking here where it says mark as date tables. Uh, this will actually try to look up for the call that you have as com as date and you can just click accept and it will create that once that's done then go back here the part model has been modified so just click update and just see it so go here where it says new measure so we'll say new measure here let's say that it's going to be year to date 
adding gonna be adding this as total year to date. It's total year to date is gonna be a sum of this as this and dates field dates it's gonna be just uh, on my table one. Become less the date. You can check here where it says check formal. Once that's done, you can just hit OK here. And it's going to be adding that here. Other thing that you can actually do is that you can actually change this so it can be a, a num uh, a currency here. And this is what it is up to February. Get that aside for one second. And this is this thing count. So we name this. We can put it to okay. So February we had this amount up to here. So we had that amount. Check that if it's actually working. And now we have this amount. This amount and this amount, this gives some amount, as you can see here. That's the amount that we have now. So it is working. I can put it here again. You'll notice that here, with this one, it will give me this. So the year to day calculation is actually working. And it's not only a year to date, but we can actually use a uh, quarter to date, we can actually use month to date, and any type of time tell use function based on your calendar table. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why you might want to use this, uh, besides the distance counts, and also because it's actually running faster, smoother, and because it's actually uh, the data that you're actually getting here in your part of data model. Uh, it's read only. You're not able to actually modify any of this. So, in terms of security, this is much reliable in terms of data integrity and data quality. Uh, uh, we actually have a tons, tons, and tons of reasons why you should actually use Parpiet. But I would like you just try it. Uh, try that add-in. Just download the add-in if you actually have Parpiet uh, in Excel 2013. Then try just testing that out with a few different data sets. Uh, if you have any other questions, just hit me on the links below. Thanks.